Well, Bowser finally got them out after three years. That's the Alco Century 636. I ordered two of them and have them both on the property here. This is the 4360, which was the first of the Alco Century 636s on the Burlington Northern. They were numbered 4360 to 4369. They came from the Spokane, Portland, and Seattle. And the SPNS had ordered the 10 of them. They had four more on order when Alco went out of business in December of 1969. But anyway, this is uh, one of the two that I have purchased, and they are a beautiful model. Bowser did a great job. They were well worth the wait for three years that they were in the works. So anyway, they are here. And this is the second of the Century 636s. This is number 4363. The real 4363 at one time had a special move it took the Amtrak Coast Starlight from Portland to Seattle Southern Pacific provided power on the train from Los Angeles to Portland and then Burlington Northern provided power from Portland to Seattle the uh, northbound Starlight was on its way and the uh, Alco, uh, Alco, the uh, BNE units that, they, that were usually used on the train wouldn't start they wouldn't even crank, they were deader to mackerel, and I don't know what all went on behind the scenes, but after a while, uh, Alco Century 636, number 4363, came over from the Hoyt Street Roundhouse to Union Station and took the dead E units and the train to Seattle all by itself. <clears throat> so there's a little bit of story there about the Alco Century 636, number 4363 in passenger service. I have a color slide of the, of the uh, big Alco pulling the train. And here's 4363 along with an SD45 and a U33C on a freight. So it's kind of Burlington Northern Day with Alco power on the home railroad. So here's the 4363 and the 6416. The 6416 is an EMD SD45. It came from the Northern Pacific. And then the trailing unit is a U33C by General Electric. And it's an Athern Blue Box. And the number 5738 would be one that Burlington Northern ordered after the merger. So it's not a locomotive from the pre-merger roads. And the engine house is full of Alco power. We have a RS-11 right here. This is an Atlas model. The RS-11s on the Burlington Northern came from the Northern Pacific. There were 18 of them and they lasted until the summer of 1980 when all the Alco power was taken out of service. And then on the, <clears throat> on the uh, in the back stall here that we have a Century 425. This is also a former SPNS locomotive. The SPNS had 150 locomotives on their roster, and out of the 150 locomotives, 130 of them were Alco, and the balance was EMD power. And here in the yard we have an SW-1000. Some of those came from the CB&Q before the merger and then Burlington Northern ordered a bunch more. I'm not sure how many of them they had, but there was a 
lot of SW1000s on the Burlington Northern. They replaced the Alco switchers that were inherited from the SPNS. And here's a better look at the Century 425. They, like I mentioned, they, they came from the SPNS along with the Century 424s. There was originally eight Century 424s. One was destroyed in a roundhouse fire in September 1970, leaving seven of them, which stayed on the BN until 1980. There was the Century 425, of which there was 16 of them. One was lost in a derailment along with two other locomotives, and the 4265 was destroyed in the in the derailment so it did not last until 1980 it was off the roster before then and here's the RS 11 of which there were 18 of them that came from the Northern Pacific this is the 4189 all the all the alco power on the Burlington Northern was in the 4000 series the RS 2s RS 3s Century 415s Century 424s, 425s, the 636s, and the RS 11s, they were all in the 4000 series. The 4000 series was later reused by some General Electric B30 7B cabless units. So the Alco's, were, Alco's number series was, kind of, was recycled later on. And here in the caboose track, we have two Burlington Northern cabooses. The first one right here. Is a former CB and Q caboose off the Burlington. This is a Backman model. The Backman model is fairly accurate, except for the toolbox under it. So it's been reworked a little bit, and of course the caboose has been custom painted. And then the other caboose right back here is an Athern caboose. This is in the later years after the side windows were blanked off, and it's kind of just an out-of-the-box Athern caboose. So anyway, we have those two cabooses in the caboose track, and you can see the locomotives in the engine now. And here at the industrial park, we have the industrial park switcher. This is the Athern SW7. The 127 is a former CB and Q unit. And here's the 4360 again. This is another one of the big Alcos. The Spokane Portland and Seattle Engineman called them giants. And the Century 636s were the only six axle freight car that the Spokane Portland and Seattle ever owned. But there were just a ten of them. And the SPS Engineman, they called them giants. I guess because they were so big. power on this freight train now we got the 4363 the 4360 and the 4252 so all alpha power on this freight trade out the big GE and the big EMD for more alpha power Kind of a size comparison between the Century 636 in the back and the Century 425 out here on the front. Give you some idea how much bigger the big Centuries, big Alco Century 636s were compared to the other engines. I guess maybe that's why they got the name Giants from the SPNS engineman. But anyhow, this is a, another view of some of the BN Alcos. Well, we've got little Alcos this time, the 2425s and the RS-11 on this train.
another one out close again. Here comes the train. Well, here's the little Alcos. This is the Century 425 number 4252, and it is followed by the Century 425 number 4264. And the third locomotive is the RS11 number 4189. All three of these are Atlas models of Alcos, and Atlas does a pretty good job on their on their motive power. They did very smooth running and very well detailed. These, I've done nothing to them other than I added the gumball flasher up on top and the correct horns. But other than that, I did not do anything else to And KD couplers, that's the other thing. Uh, the uh, locomotives all got uh, real KD couplers, not the KD wannabes. So anyhow, but other than that, I did nothing to them, but just add the, add the gumball flashers on the top and the correct horns for the, for the, uh, locomotive the century 636 is I did absolutely nothing to them the only thing I'm going to do I haven't done it yet I ordered the correct horns there's some horns in the box that came with the locomotive but they're not correct for the SPNS BN Alco century 636 horns so I have some horns on order and when those get get on the property I'll install those but other than that I've done nothing to them and nothing really is required they have real Katie's on them right out of the box and they are fully detailed they have the gumball flashers up on the roof of the cab and those actually light up when the locomotive is running and uh, so anyway I'm not going to do much to the the big Alcos I'm going to just kind of leave them as they came out of the box well there's more than just Alco power in the Burlington Northern they had other locomotives as well one locomotive is this one here number 6430 Hustle Muscle it's a, it's a bit of a his, historical unit. This is the very first General Motors EMD SD45 that was built and Great Northern bought the first one. It was number 400 on the Great Northern, but this is how it looks looked when it went to the Burlington Northern. The locomotive is now in a rail museum in Duluth, Minnesota. Now here's the 6430 in its original form, Great Northern 400, and as you can see on the side of the hood here, it has the has the uh, hustle muscle lettering on it and this is how it was built when has how it looked when it was built in 1966 the first SD 45 that EMD sold to a railroad Now the 6430 Hustle Muscle here is a Atherin model. It's basically out of the box. The only thing I did to it was change the couplers. Atherin uses McHenry couplers, which are kind of a KD wannabe. And they aren't very good. So the first thing I do with anything Atherin is take the McHenry couplers off and throw them in the trash and replace them with KDs.
Well, we got a pair of Alco Century 425s on the train now. And there goes the Century 425s into the tunnel, out the tunnel, behind the buildings here in this little town. And in the other tunnel. Well, this is an Ather Atherin model of the EMD GP35, the Century 425, which is right here, was introduced as competition to the GP35. The Century 425 only sold 90 units, and there were almost 1,300 GP35s, so you can see the competition was pretty lopsided. But anyway, the GP35 and the Century 425 by Alco and then General Electric about the same time came out with the U25B. All three of them were 2,500 horsepower and uh, the EMDs ruled the roost. So there was way more EMD GP35s built than, than uh, Alco Century 425s and General Electric U25Bs. But anyhow, this is kind of tell the difference in them here. Well, we've got the two Alco Century 425s up front with the GP35 trailing on this train. Since this is an Alco production, but it's also Burlington Northern, so we'll kind of mix a little EMD power in here as well. And here's the Alcos. Here's the 4252, followed by the 4264. And the GP35 number 2518. As I mentioned earlier, most of the Alco power came from the Spokane, Portland, and Seattle, but the GP35s came from both the Great Northern and the Burlington. So there were some variations in the GP35s. The Burlington ones had the headlight in the low nose as well as a oscillating light above the number between the number boards. And the SPS Alcos did not have any extra headlights, they had just the normal headlights up between the number boards. But anyway, these two are Atlas, the two Alcos are Atlas units, and the GP35 is an Atherin ready to roll.